Hi, my name is Shaylin Malone, and I am a clinical coordinator at Centerstone. And I'm here to talk to you about National Mental Health and Depression Screening Month. Depression is actually quite common. People kind of relate us to like um, feeling like down and depressed and seeing kind of like this dark cloud, but depression doesn't always look like sadness. Sometimes uh, depression is, is experienced and shown outward and it could be seen through anger, aggression. A lot of times you can see that with kids with anger and aggression. And then there's the depression shown inward that I think we commonly see on, you know, movies on TV or TV shows is that person that's just like hiding under the covers and they don't come out of their room for a couple of weeks. And so there's that whole like spectrum of ways you can experience depression. And the thing is, it's very common. Every day, you know, we hope to reduce the stigma of mental illness and people are experiencing these things and that they can come and they can get help and they can feel better. Everyone deserves to feel good and not to feel depressed and hopeless all the time. And so that's what our goal is, is to help people with that. But it's important to know that this is common and it is treatable. And it's time now that we look at symptoms of depression as something that needs to be treated. I mean, people are likely to go to the doctor and treat their health conditions, that their physical health, you know, if, if right now people are, are getting screened and tested for all their health conditions, it's just as important to get screened for those mental health things um, and to treat people, uh, treat that like it is a condition because it does impact, it's a cycle, it impacts the body and the, and the, and the overall functioning. And I think it's, um, basically it's really easy to go from being what people might call just being bummed out. If that goes too long and it goes untreated, it could be much, much worse and more severe and, and many more risk factors to health and ongoing mental illness could arise. So the most basic way that I can say that they're important is that symptoms can either be physiological or they could be symptoms of a mental health issue. Some of the things that look like um, a health issue might actually be a symptom of depression, like sleeping too much or sleeping too little, which is kind of a common one that people are like, okay, my sleep is starting, it, it's not, I'm not sleeping well. And that could be something related to a, a physical health symptom, but it could also be related to mental health, you know, coupled with some other things weight gain and weight loss are a symptom of depression but it could also be a symptom of a physiological issue so it's important to really um, differentiate between what's going on whether it's a physical health issue or a mental health issue and that being said it's important to understand if it is mental health and you are experiencing depression depression can impact health physical health issues and so it's important to know what you're dealing with and, and really treat both. Your long-term mental health issues that go untreated can impact your physical health and then in turn your physical health could then impact your mental health so it could be a vicious cycle if not treated properly. Most commonly we use tools that we call outcome measures, uh, one of those being the PHQ-9 which is a depression rating scale, kind of symptoms over the last couple of weeks. Another common one that we use is the GAD-7, which is to, to measure generalized anxiety disorder. If you were to contact Centerstone and you were um, put on the schedule for an assessment, because we do open access, uh, so you could get your same day assessment, you will get a PHQ-9 administered to you. So that would be the clinician that you are meeting with would, would ask you those questions. Uh, if you were coming into the office in times that were more normal and not getting telehealth, then it would have been administered like you would have filled out the form by hand. Um, but these, these are questions that can be asked. I know that several uh, doctor's offices are actually using some of those questions too. I think it's becoming a much more common uh, tool that's being used, the, the PHQ-9 for sure. So we have the PHQ-9, which is for adults, but we also have one that is for 
uh, ages 11 to 17 because de depression doesn't just affect adults, right? So uh, we do have that adapted tool for our uh, youth as well. So the PHQ-9 looks at the last two weeks, um, how often a client has been bothered by certain symptoms. So the first one we might ask is, how often in the last two weeks would you say that you've experienced little interest or pleasure in doing things? And so to rate that, um, it could be not at all, several days, more than half the days, or nearly every day. And so it would be a little interest or pleasure in doing things, and then the person doing the that's receiving the assessment could answer that question based on the last the last two weeks. Another question would be, how often have you been bothered by feeling down, depressed, or hopeless? Um, trouble falling or staying asleep or sleeping too much? Uh, poor appetite, overeating? Um, how often have you been bothered by feeling bad about yourself or that you were a failure of let yourself or your family down? Trouble concentrating on things such as reading the newspaper or um, even, you know, getting distracted watching television. A common one that um, is more noticeable for the person doing the assessment, but is often asked is if people, how often have you been um, moving or speaking so slowly that other people could have noticed or the opposite being so fidgety or restless that you have been moving around a lot or more than usual. And of course, it's, super, it's important to ask thoughts that you would be better off dead or of hurting yourself. And then we would ask the, the, the client um, if they've rated any of these as a problem, how difficult have these problems been for them, um, for them to do their work or go to school or take care of home things or get along with people. And that's not difficult at all, somewhat difficult, very difficult and extremely difficult. And then this is a scorable um, outcome measure. And so it helps to determine like, what level of depression someone might be experiencing and kind of what um, intervention they may need if they just need you know a little bit of counseling on a monthly basis or you know is it more moderate and maybe they need regular counseling and, and maybe they might want to consider seeing a psychiatrist i generally also ask okay this has been the last two weeks but how long have you been experiencing these symptoms and how long has this been impacting your life? Because we often see that people that are coming in and, and doing these screenings have been experiencing symptoms much longer than two weeks. But really that's kind of that change window that we look at for a lot of outcome measures and how they're doing. It is uh, administered, administered progressively for anyone with a diagnosis of any form of depression. We administer this every, every month to um, to be able to check on the progress and how the interventions that, that the client and the clinician have identified to work on together, how those are working. And so it is a way to, here's where we start, but here's where we're going. And so it's a good way to continue to progressively monitor how those symptoms are and how we can continue to go about treating them and what is working. And if something's not working, how we can modify that. One thing that people might have questions about is that la that last question about thoughts that would you be better off dead or of hurting yourself? Um, certainly if somebody indicates that they have those thoughts, then, then we, there is another screen that we implement. I think sometimes a lot of people just dismiss symptoms as being something like, their health or they're just stressed out. And so they may not identify that, that what they're experiencing is depression. I think generally people don't realize that they're experiencing what could be a symptom. And, and the thing is, is it can be a symptom, but at what point does that depression become a problem? Is it depression or is it kind of situational? And that's why it's so important to screen because you never know if, you know, okay, this is a really stressful time and certainly some of these symptoms would be legitimate to experience, but when they go on and they start impacting your functioning, that's when it's, you know, important to treat it. And that's why there's still the stigma with mental health and with depression, anxiety, and all the other mental health and mental illnesses that I think people are just, um, you know, assume that, oh, if I, if I'm honest on this, um, especially that thoughts of hurting myself, that they're going to put me, they're going to put me in a hospital. I think that's the most common preconceived notion is that if somebody admits that they've ever had 
suicidal thoughts or experienced kind of these negative feelings that that we're going to instantly put somebody in kind of a residential setting and that's really not the case and we're we're here to help that issue because the reality is a hospitalization is a short-term solution and and therapy can be a much long term much more long-term solution and option as well. and it, it's so important to be honest so that we can really get people the help that they need.